Polite Boxing in association with Frank Warren and Queensbury Promotions. Steel City Jim Sheffield, say that when you're pissed. Um, <laughs> Sonny Edwards, how are you Sonny? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you, I'm really good. All good. Now, just talking to your big brother Charlie's a little while back, he's saying, do we think it's harsh, but he's called the nice Edwards brother? I haven't heard that. You must be hearing that from, from behind my back. I've not heard that one. You know, I'm that the better one. looking one, so all right. Um, I don't know, I just, yeah, I'm a bit of a dickhead from time to time, but, you know. You're I, a likeable I, dickhead though, aren't you? To some people, for some people. Um, I don't know, I think I'm a bit of a Marmite character more than Pat Charlie is. I feel like, but it's just, it's just who I am. I mean, I'm not really apologetic for that. Um, I'll say what I think and how I feel. I feel like I'm, I've been raised well enough and, uh, and I've got enough morals that I don't tread over the line of, you know, scandals. I mean, even though I do say quite out there things sometimes, but... I was going to come on to this later, but since you've sort of taken the conversation there, I mean, your social media activity, what are the actual rules of engagement? Because you sort of like, you see you react to certain things, you say, if you do this to me, I'm going to come back at you, blah, blah, blah. What are the actual defined rules of engagement? Well, I don't send for anyone. Like, I don't spend my day looking for people to give stick to. I, I just don't. I mean, I'll comment on fighters fighting, boxing, but that's the world we live in, do you know what I mean? I think I'm a boxer, people follow me for my opinion on, on the sport sometimes, do you know what I mean? But, yeah, if people just want to disrespect me or, or try and dig me out, then I can take it to the extreme. You know why? Because I don't really, I grew up in an environment where nothing's really off limits, like you get terrorised for everything. And do you know what? Charlie is probably the worst. Like he is probably, he was one of them kids, yeah, do you know like, you say one thing to them, they take it to the, ext the highest extreme that they possibly can straight away. There's no insteps, and that was my brother, do you know what I mean? So, and I'm quite quick witted anyway, but yeah, so he's mellowed, he's mellowed right down. Nah, sort of... I just turn the camera off and he's still yeah. there. Tell him he's a savage, Charlie. Like, people, I would like to see it more, to be honest. I would much like to see Charlie like that more because, yo, Charlie would cut deep and there's nothing off, thing off, off camera. But see me, I think, and people disrespect me on social media and that, and, like, you got to remember, a lot of these people, not all of them, but a lot of these people I don't know, haven't met. Like, I can just quickly look at their profile when I've got to target something else, I don't know them, you know what I mean? That so it seems to be your tactic, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll target them. Straight they, on their pictures. If they come at me, I'll target their, their emails their, on there or something. Yeah, their missus, or, or if they've got their phone number, I'll put that on there and have a, have a laugh with them. So don't be sending shots to people if you've got their phone number in your bio or something. You know what I mean, that, that's one main rule, I think. Um, Sometimes they're literally begging you to take it down, aren't they? Yeah, but I think the, the thing is, the biggest rule for me is if someone disrespects you, you have to get them back. You have to get them back worse, and that's it. If, if people just show me love, I just show love back, and and and, and, and then we keep it moving. I don't. You got I don't involved really in um, that young kid who got himself in bother the other day, didn't you? So you uh, James Hawley. You're talking yeah, about. you had a little. <coughs> you, didn't you have a little argument, a couple of arguments about that? Now, do you know what it was? Yeah, and I was onto James Hawley because he boxed someone I know, Josh Adewale. Joshua Adewale is a decent little like was a decent little fighter. Do you know what I mean? He is a decent little fighter. He's tough. He's game. And they fought each other early on. Josh, Josh, uh, James Hawley won. And I and I've seen a little bit of it. He's a good fighter, but like he just he got he got. Bear in mind, he's a six and zero prospect. Yeah, that's fighting on small hall shows. Now I don't know what like I don't know who gassed him up to think he can start sending for a large demographic in the world, which is the LGBTQ community. And, and, and in this day and age, it's like, he had very, very little tact or, or I want to say spatial awareness, but I don't really mean that. Like, he just, like, being self-aware, like, what you can and can't How say. How old is he, 18, is he? 21, I think he is. Is he? But still, like... Silly I mean, pillow talk it was, wasn't it? But, I mean, he's made a video saying that he's been dropped by his management company, which is your management company. Yeah. Um, and I think you posted something about you agree with that. I agree, but you know what it was, yeah? Like, everyone has their own beliefs, their core beliefs, their values, and what they agree with, what they don't agree with. Like, I could be really for gay people, gay marriage, or I could be really against it. But the thing is, the boxing world's not going to know, because I'm not going to just spout my opinion, do you know what I mean? It's like, why? But why? What makes you feel qualified to do that? But when he's come out there and sort of, the way he said it as well, it's not that he just don't agree with it. He's saying stuff like, oh, lesbians are all right, they can kiss. I want to watch that. Very misogynistic, very like pig, it's pig mouth. I don't like it, do you know what I mean? Like, it's disgusting because 
being gay for a lot of people is a massive thing. You know, coming out as a as a being a homosexual is, is a massive thing for a lot a lot of people. And there's a lot of closet people that watch boxing. There's a lot of closet boxers out there more time. Must be. Must so be. calling them all a disgrace to their families, like that's having an effect on them. Me, bounce off me, and I don't care. It's like it's, it's not part of my life. Do you know what I mean? But there's a lot of people that, that would sit there directly, and they they will get affected by hearing stuff like that. Do you think though? I, I'm purely playing devil's advocate here with a counter argument. If the said management company adopts a higher moral high ground, yeah. takes disciplinary action, doesn't that need to be, that standard needs to be maintained across the board? Not just because he's a 6 and 0 kid, he, you can kick him out. Um, Billy Joe Saunders, perhaps. I mean, Billy Joe you know, Saunders there's, has. There's other examples but there's where, Billy where Joe the Saunders. big players, they haven't yeah, taken okay. action. But if we look at the Billy Joe Saunders big scandals, he's been punished for every single time, bear in mind. Not by but, them. Um, but bear in mind, he's the um, the one where he got the the smacked to uh, yeah, slap yeah. some walking. Yeah, that is quite naughty. It is, and he got in trouble for that. Not by them, but at the end of the day, boxers are little bastards. A lot of us are little bastards. You know, outside the camera. And I know. But if you set a rule, haven't yeah, you got to apply it across the board? But that's that's affecting one person. Okay. The thing where he went, oh, your miss is gonna give her a left hook, give her a right hook. It's in jest. Think of comedians. I can name a hundred comedians that do jokes about cancer, do jokes about racism, do jokes. He was, that was a, a video in jest. Mm. He's not yeah. sat there looking at the screen going, you're a disgrace to your family if you're gay. If you're a bender, you're, if you want to bum people, you're a disgrace. No, I mean, that's Bill's a complete stuff, different, yeah, Bill's that's a stuff complete different, like, different. If he came out and went, mm. every single bird needs to get battered. Mm. Then maybe I could have all, all said something towards gay people that, like, but he didn't. Like, okay, he's done a few naughty things that he's got to slap in the wrist for, but he hasn't slandered and like basically cussed out a whole sexual preference. You know what I mean? Like, you, you can't do that. It's like me coming out now on this and start spouting some very ignorant stuff about race. Like, you, you can't. There's certain things you can't really speak on, especially in a tone that's not. He could have. He could have said the same thing in a different way and not got off as bad. I say a lot of things. The 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 day before or the same day. I said because I was getting called out by some idiot that my brothers beat, and I went, "All right, well, come and have a spar with me. If you get to the final, if you don't get to the final round, your ugly missus got to suck me off." Like, if I said fucking something further than that, I could have got me in trouble. But obviously, it's just like tongue in cheek. It's like kind of a dark banter. Do you know what I mean? But he wasn't doing that. He was looking down and cussing, saying all gay people are disgraces to their family, and that—that's the line. You, it was dark. Yeah. Yeah. And who the fuck is James Hawley to be speaking like that? Like talking about. Oh, loads of people, like he's some massive celebrity, like talking about people sending dick pics to him and that's why he done it, that was an excuse. Every single male probably, not even just a boxer, has had some weirdo sending him some shit on Instagram for a message or something. Get all the time, you get it, like. You must get a broad spectrum of stuff. Oh you, so. mate, I would love to start showing I mean, up. We probably only see the tip of the iceberg, don't we? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I reply to quite a lot of mine, but like, and then obviously I put a tweet out, like, no, to be fair, I agree, because it's like up there with the level of it's like racism, you know, sexism, um, well, it is homophobia. Illegal, so I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, but like, but why? What? Because someone said, do you agree with LG? Because bear in mind, he had a, a choice to just ignore that question. So when you get asked things, you can choose to ignore it. He chose to speak on it. Do you know what I mean? Like on his TikTok, like what? What twenty-year-old man sits there in bed with his top off talking about gay people on TikTok anyway? I, I didn't know that even was a thing. I, I swear to God, I didn't realize this was a thing. Like, I didn't realise it until I thought it was Periscope, that's what it looked like to me. Or, or like an Insta Live sort of thing, but... Like, no, he, he took the line and, and good. Good riddance, man. They've got so many fighters, I don't need him. And I know what you're saying about there should be broader spectrum, but it's like... Everything now take up to thing whether... Because in our contracts, if we bring the, contract, uh, the company into distribute, then they can cancel our contract. You've signed that by signing with them. And same with my Frank Warren contract, and every other contract I've ever signed. If you... If something you're doing brings them into distributors that they, they don't like, they can cut you at any point. And rightfully so, and I, and I agreed with it. And then for him to then start tweeting, saying, oh, I don't insert you two stone rap, da -da -da -da, he's just jealous. Look, your biggest fight at 6 and 0 you boxed another small hall fight on a small hall on YouTube. I'm about to box my like seventh fight in a row on TV, earning probably more for this fight than every single fight. Can, so you can cuss me all you want about being two stone and da 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 da, but I'm not arse, you know what I mean? I'm just not pig ignorant like him, so it's, do you enjoy social media? Would you be a happier sunny if it didn't exist? Without boxing, I wouldn't have it. Without boxing, I wouldn't have it. Um, 
I'm very opinionated, see, and it's a good platform to just put my opinion out because it's something I'm qualified to speak on a lot of time, like boxing and stuff like that. Like, I don't really speak on things that I don't really know too much about. So, like, yeah. So, but I, I'm not gonna start slating. Like, what, what, like, and all I said was the people that are usually really unhappy and, and show hate towards gay people are the ones that are in the closet themselves. That's from like, that's what I seem like. That's you know what I mean because. Why is what two men do in the bedroom so concerned of yours? It, should it, no. <laughs> it should not affect your day to the sit that you're sat there fuming, getting dropped by your management team and all your sponsors. Like, it should not affect your day that much. I know as a straight male that the last 24 years, I've never needed to sit there and just slag off gay people and say they're a disgrace because they're not. Because what people get up into the bedroom, whether there's a man and a woman, two men, two women, four men, four women, whatever it is. If I'm not involved, it's not my, it's not my place to say. I think we've all done stuff in that bedroom that we wouldn't want our mum to know. We wouldn't want like, it to be common knowledge. You know what I mean, that's just life, isn't it? Whether you're straight, whether you're gay, whether you're lesbian, whether you're anything in between. Like, we've all done stuff in that sense that we're not proud of, but you just don't need to speak out about it. Innit? And like, when I watched it, I was, like, I was cringing very bad. And that's why I put a comment on it, like, Thought, what a dickhead, do you know what I mean? Let me be real, that's literally what I thought. Well, let's hope he comes back from it. I mean, you don't want to see it to he's destroy, a good fighter, his, destroy his career, you know. But he's quite, like, that's what I said, like, he's a pretty good fighter, and, and I respected him as a fighter for taking that early fight, because I, I already was on to who he was before this come out, but when I seen it, I was like, oh my lord. And then to do the whole feel sorry act for me the next day, reading something that was clearly written, like, because he was. They, when he was cussing gay people, he weren't looking away from the camera and stuttering. But as soon as he had something to say about apologising, he was. Uh, 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 do you know move what I mean? Like, come Let's on. Move on. Yeah. Um, last time I saw you, your hands were absolutely frazzled. Um, mm -hmm. You took your last fight with virtually no hands. How are they now? What process yeah. have you been through? After my last fight, well, it was before my last fight, but after my last fight, they were both swollen up, like, quite bad. Um, Nothing went, but it was a lot of like damage to them. So I had to have three months of doing nothing. I went, I went um, to the hospitals, um, specialists seen them about four or five times. Um, I had like certain splints, I had like covers for my hand, just all little things. But the main thing was, don't punch them for a while. Um, it was just a con damage. repetitive yeah. impact was causing stress and they weren't repairing. I was hurting them in sparring and then punching the next day. And I was doing that for about, do you know that, that period of fights between Ryan Farrick and Marcel Gray I was very busy. Mm. They were, they went in about May, in the middle of that. So I did about six, seven, seven months, and I think three fights with damaged hands. Uh, Gallardo, Guerreras and Braithwaite, I all had damaged hands. I didn't have good hands. But mainly, it was all my right, so my left hand in every fight, I was, was fine. But in the, the build up to the Braithwaite, my left went against my brother, I was sparring. When you're in there, just for a, a layman who's not a boxer, when you're in there and your hands are all professionally taped up and everything else, even if you've got your bad hands beforehand, can you feel it the moment you throw it? Yeah. Watch throw the fight. Something? Watch the fight back. Every land I've shot clean on his head, handshake out, handshake out. It's adrenaline that got me through. The best thing that ever happened to me in that performance was getting knocked down in the seventh. But after that, I didn't feel my hands then. I thought, fuck this prick, he's having it. You know what I mean? That, that's a sim that, that, that's as, as real as I can get in front of the camera. Because like. really, apart from the second round where he closed the gap a bit, didn't land too much, but was roughing me up a bit, I tranced the rest of the fight. You know what I mean? Apart from when he put me down in the seventh. But if you look at the seven rounds before the knockdown and the five rounds after, the five rounds after were 10 times better than the thing. So sometimes I'm like that, I need to get woke up. When, when I get too comfortable, I get a bit complacent. and. It woke me up, but my hands now are perfect. I've been sparring, 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 punching, punching, punching. But lockdown was the best thing that happened to me. When I got into camp for the May the second fight, um, when I got into camp for that, only one hand was 100%, my right hand wasn't. I did a couple of spars and it was hurting still. Eight weeks of literally sitting on the sofa getting fat. I went from being about 57, 58 kilos in camp. I went up to 67 kilos. I went up to I 67 a kilos. What was that? What was that like? I mean, so it must be quite weird for... I've been to 64 before, but yeah. never that high. But someone of your sort of athletic ability and constant motion, all of a sudden to be sort of a bit like the side of a bus, it must be you know quite what the, thing, the problem with me is, since um, I 
did my ankle against um, okay, no, Granados. Yeah. Since I've done my ankle against Granados, I haven't been able to run properly. This is the first camp I've actually ran properly. I do hill runs there, but if I did a run, the next day I was usually missing training because my, my knee would get mashed up, my back, every, like, everything was just falling apart. And that was for every fight after Granados. Well, you needed a proper break then, didn't you? Definitely, but what happened was, so I couldn't run and I couldn't punch and Good everything was closed. Yeah. So I just thought, fuck this, fuck boxing. And I became a dad for eight, or I don't know what became a dad, but for eight, nine weeks, I was having my son half the time. Usually I have him one night a week or two nights a week at max. I was having him three or four nights a week, every week through lockdown, boom, 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 boom. Were you eating his rusts for the time, were you? Well, I just want, so I think I was putting him to bed. Oh, I'm not going to cook. Take away, take away. I was having a copper burger to it. It was nice, you know what I mean? It was nice playing PlayStation with Lyndon and Zelfa and then till stupid o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. Didn't have anything to get up for, did you? Do you know what I mean? And it was nice, you know, it was nice. But the moment that Grant said professionals can train again, I've been on it. So I think this is my ninth week training. I've got just under five weeks to go to my fight. And I'm in the best shape I've ever been at this far out. My weight's the best. I've been weighing 55 and a half kilos. I normally enter that fight week if, if I'm lucky. Normally it's that 56, 56 and a half. I'm flying, flying. I can confirm the weight is off. Yeah, look. Arms are getting bigger. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're looking nice. That fight with Marcel, what it did serve was to fulfil that British title ambition. Yep. Tick. Um, oh, it's not ticked yet. Well. It's still got three more ticks to go. Well, yeah. But when you look at, you say, your weight division and you're sort of working out all these permutations, sort of saying, if I do this as a voluntary and Marcel here trying to make up those three defences. And then you look at someone like Brad Foster, who's rattled through four, four defences in the space of about 12, 14 months. You must sort of think, blimey, why can't that happen for me? Frustrating. Um, and the reason why I've been quiet on it, yeah, because I was, I know I've got a voluntary, but the only one that wants to fight me, because everyone's been offered it, is Marcel again. Yeah. And of course it is, because he got paid well to fight me last time, and he'll have it again. He'll probably fight me all my defences if I could, you know what I mean? But, I'm just waiting for my mandatory to come up, to be honest. And I'm honestly, whether I win a world title in my next couple of fights, I'm not vacating that British. They're not taking it off me. Like, the British board have already asked for it back, and I said no. <laughs> they wanted to find me an opponent. No, they, they said, oh, let's get it engraved. And I was like, when I defend it, you can have it back, and then get it engraved. Like, I'm not giving it back, because I know they take it and they say, oh, okay, you can have it back when you defend it. I'm not soft. <laughs> you can come, they're going to have to come grab that belt off me themselves. Like, because. I will fight anyone that they put in front of me for it. Anyone, do you I don't think care. Your will be? Fuck the fighter. No one wants to fight me. No one's in a rush to put in for mandatory. The 90 days has surely been up by now to put in the mandatory. Do you know what I mean? So why, why, why has everyone else been ordered mandatory? And Brad Foster's managed to defend it four times. No one will fight me. Like, then one person will be like, oh, I'll fight him. And then it comes to, okay, then oh, I don't want it. And like, they get paid good to fight me. Which fights do you actually want, you know, for these British titles? I know. The Sheffield boys be mentioned, doesn't he? Um, oh, but they're Frank. all they're all Joe Kite. All of them are Joe Kites. Rick. All of them. I don't rate any of them. I don't because they've all had good opportunity. Now, for the if you're not going to fight me for the British title, you must think I'm fucking lethal. If if a British title and a good purse isn't and BT slot is not enough to get you out of your bed, like, oh, oh, fine, but you're not taking the British title off me. Keep people saying like that like Wayne Smith, like, oh, you'll be vacating the British. Show. No, I won't. Yeah. I will not vacate the day. Like, like Ryan Walsh, hang on. I will, I will fight for a world title and fight 20 days later to defend my British if I have to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not taking it off like fact. I'm keeping that belt until I retire. If I don't defend, defend it three times, I'll just run away with it and say, it's all Romney. You know what I mean? They're not taking it off yeah. me. They're not. They're not. Well, it is up to them it's to make the matches, isn't it? At but, the end of the day, there should be a rule in place here yeah, that if a certain amount of mandatory, like the time, when, if I don't get no mandatory the first time, and it come round for the time, and then another 180 days go by, no mandatory. Another 100, they should give me the belt. If no one wants to defend me, like if it goes to three mandatories, then there should be something. Like Andrew Selby should have his British title right now. Yeah, sure. And no he does. And that's no a shame. Would fight him, would they? No. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, I was too too early to fight him for his British title. I was, mm. I was like five, four, five, six, and zero when he vacated or whatever. Or, or maybe I was getting on, but I, I didn't. It fight really him. held him up as well, didn't it? That yeah. was his career. Didn't go the way it should have like, done. Char it? Charlie was going to fight him for it and then got offered a world title. Mm. And then obviously when he pulled out the British thing and then three, two months later it was, oh, he's fighting for the IBF. People thought, oh, you're dodging him. Well, obviously when you've told that you can fight for a British, like uh, fight for a world title, you're going to take that. Do you know what I mean? Um, when, do you know what I mean? So 
That was the only time we would have really had to fight. Charlie wanted to fight him. You know what I mean? You're back out keeping Daniel Dubois company. Yeah, again. On, it's like, uh, I think my fourth or fifth show, I think, me and yeah, Dan. Me and yeah. we've been, been the amateurs together. We shared a flatting thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, August 29th at the BT studio. Thomas Asomba. Now, people might look at it and say he's got a bit of a patchy record, but he's a tough hombre, hasn't he? Yeah, and I know that. Like, he, he was a, a senior ABA finalist. Um, in this country. He was an Olympian, wasn't he? He was a what, two times Olympian, I think, was he? He was definitely an yeah. Olympian. I think he might have been two times, maybe not. But, um, and he gave Paddy Barnes a good old go as well um, in the Olympics. Yeah. I was there. And Jay in the pro. Jay, yeah, beat him by a couple of points. Lee um, got him out there right at the end. I've never seen that fight, but apparently it was a good fight. Lee, Lee said he's very tough. Like I said, stars make fights, and with me, I should be able to make easier work than what they have, I would like to think. But he's coming off great form. He beat Sean McGoldrick and then beat a 7 0 Kazakh. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So he's ranked with WBA, dropping down from Bantam to Super Bantam, uh, Superfly, sorry. So yeah, like, if people have a problem with that fight, I don't really know for them because we can only work with someone that's living in Britain. And it, it, he's probably one of the harder fights you're going to get, really. Yeah. Joe Mafosa don't want to know, Harvey Horn don't want to know, Tommy Frank don't want to know, like, I could list, list, no one wants to know, Kezi Kademi don't want to know. They mention me in interviews, oh, they love, all of them love mentioning me in interviews and their local newspapers and their, their fucking tweets and oh, they do, do, do. They all want to fight me though, so they can go fuck themselves like that. I'm sick to death of all their names, to be honest, because they're just joke men. And the thing is, what's the matter, they're not even boxing each other, so I don't know what they're doing. They love just fighting journeymen, like, I, I can't. What have you made I'm, between, what have you made of the, uh, the two BT packages behind closed doors? I mean, I think they packaged it out well and made a good programme out of it. It's sort of, it's a difficult one though, isn't it, with no atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, I didn't watch the first one, I'll be real with you. I watched the highlights, but the second one I tuned in for, the one Saturday. Just give you an idea of what you're going to come Not up with. Not even that. Um, Denzel is a good friend of mine, I like him. And I think he's a good fighter. Chris Bork was on GB with, interesting fight. And Joe Joyce, I wanted to just see him knock out someone, to be honest. Um, yeah. Did you good picture look. yourself in that environment? Oh, of course, of course. And I mean, it seems like a lot of odd things are going on. like. That don't make sense, you know what I mean? Because I'm pretty sure Richie Woodall and whoever else was commentating with him, um, John Rawlin, was, they probably stood more than two metres at some point, so why they couldn't sit next to each other on the commentary thing, they had to be up like two metres over, I don't know, do you know what I mean? But it's, it's just, bizarre. I think it's almost uh, jump backside covering at the moment, you've got, got to be seen to be doing everything right. What's getting yeah. me is, take away from the boxing, man, we're getting made to jump through hoops in some places that we're not in others, like, I've got to wear this mask to walk in a petrol station to fill my car up. But if I go to eat Nando's, I don't. Mm. <laughs> Let me know if it's you. It's like the other one, though. You can be in solitary confinement for however long before a fight. Same for Dalton this week. But then afterwards, you could all go down the pub together. You That's know, what we're going to do. Yeah. All going to be in the hotel bar celebrating after. It's just, it is balmy, but... It's got to be done, hasn't it? It's got to be done if we want to fight. And we've got to play to their tune, but... The world that we live in is a very messed up place. I think that's a whole other conversation, but whatever they've done this whole lock the world down for, for I don't know. And I don't think we'd want to know, to be honest, but it's definitely not because one killer virus is wiping out the whole world. It's definitely not that. I know that for, for a fact, for a fact. Right, before we get into the world, according to Sonny Edwards, we'll call it a day there. <laughs> otherwise, I think we'll be sitting here for the next three hours. Oh, so. Jesus Christ, we will be. We will Sonny, be. nice one. Um, we'll see you in a few weeks' time, or a bit more than that. Good luck with everything and thank you for having us down.